Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this equation. But uh, I really don't want to tell you what type of equation this is or even a little bit of a clue on what I'm going to be doing because I first want to give you an opportunity to see if you can solve this equation. And of course, we're solving for the variable A. Now, if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through and explain how to solve this type of equation. And this is going to be critical for those of you out there that are taking a little bit more advanced math course, maybe like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Algebra, uh, any kind of second year algebra course. You absolutely must know how to solve these type of equations. So you're going to want to uh, pay attention. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have a to the fourth plus a squared minus six is equal to zero. Uh, we're looking for um, what a is equal to. We're trying to solve this equation for a. The correct answer is the following. So a is equal to positive negative square root 3i and then positive negative square root of 2. So we have four unique solutions here, uh, two complex or imaginary and two real. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%. And multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you can solve higher order polynomial equations because that's what we're dealing with here. This is an, uh, a polynomial equation and it's a fourth degree polynomial equation. So typically speaking, anything beyond a second degree polynomial equation, something like this, like x squared plus x minus 8 is equal to 0. This type of equation is a quadratic equation, and we kind of have a specific name for a second-degree polynomial uh, equation, i.e. a quadratic equation. But uh, anything beyond uh, the power of 2, like the power of 3, power of 4, uh, oftentimes is referred to as a higher order. Um, and of course, the order we're talking about is the degree of the polynomial. And we're going to a um, higher order um, equation. So we're going to have to bring some other techniques to bear. Uh, these problems are uh, definitely a lot more challenging than a simple quadratic equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going. And if you're like, wow, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am confused. Well, I'm going to try to unconfuse you right now. All right, so let's go ahead and first start. And I didn't give you any clues in the beginning of this video. I didn't say, hey, uh, this is a higher order polynomial equation. And this is critical because in algebra, in mathematics, there's all different uh, types of equations. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and just name some uh, here. So this is for those of you that have taken algebra one, uh, certainly, and of course, algebra two as well. Uh, there's different types of equations. So when you first start studying algebra, you learn these things like 2x minus 1 is equal to 8. Things like this. This is a simple linear equation. Okay, this is just what this is called, a one variable uh, linear equation. And of course, you have to master those type of equations. Then you move on to other things like systems of equations, two variable linear systems to be precise. And I'm just going to kind of make something up here. So this should look familiar to a lot of you, a lot of you out there. So these are systems, linear equations. Then we have other type of things. We have quadratic equations, as I indicated uh, before. And then we have uh, other type of things that we can study, uh, like radical equations. Uh, I'm just going to make something up again, uh, just so some of you out there, you know, you may not know the names, but you, you should be able to recognize what I'm writing in terms of patterns. And the reason why this is important, matter of fact, let me write a few more, x over x plus 1 is equal to 7. So we have rational equations, and you could just go on and on and on. Let me see here, 3x is equal to 7. This is an exponential equation. So we have a lot of different type of equations, and these are only a sample of what we study in algebra. And of course, in algebra 2, college algebra, second year algebra, 
you learn uh, different types of equations, um, you know, more advanced type of equations. And each one of these equations requires their own kind of uh, methods, techniques to solve, you know, for the uh, variable, okay? So we need to understand, hey, what type of equation is this right here, this a to the fourth plus a squared minus six? Well, this right here is a polynomial equation, okay? A polynomial equation. And a polynomial, uh, let's just kind of be clear about this. A lot of people know what this uh, word is. Oh, yeah, I know what a polynomial is. Well, really, do you know what a polynomial is? Because if you can define a polynomial, go ahead and put that into the comment section. But more or less, a polynomial is the following. So the first thing we need is a variable. So we have A here, but let's just use X, for example. And then there's two components here. So the number we put in front of X and the power of X. So there's two conditions. Now let's start with the first uh, condition, the easiest condition, the coefficient. So the number that we put in front of this variable can be any real number. So for example, anything along the number line. Uh, so it could be a negative one, it could be negative 3.2. This is not a problem. We could put any coefficient here, but we do have some restrictions on the power, okay, the exponent. So this can only be zero, uh, one, two, etc. So we're only talking about the whole numbers here, okay? You can't have any negative powers. This, in other words, this would not be a polynomial. So let's take a look at a few examples of what a polynomial could be. You could have like 7.8y to the fifth. Okay, this is perfectly fine because here we have a lovely real number and the degree, okay, the power to this exponent is five, which is a nice um, uh, positive integer. Okay, it cannot be negative five because this now is not a, a term of a polynomial. Okay, you gotta be very precise about this. So. Again, when we're dealing with polynomials, all different sorts of things need to come on. You'll be like, all right, let me see here. Uh, this guy on YouTube, he was telling me to try to identify the equations. You're like, oh, I know what this is. This is a polynomial, okay, or a polynomial equation. But so what, okay? We're like, yeah, it's a polynomial equation. Well, what should I be thinking? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that now. All right, so when you're dealing with a polynomial equation, now, there's different types, right? Let's just kind of uh, write some out here. 2x is equal to 10. Now, this is a linear equation, but it's also a polynomial equation. Uh, this is just a, a monomial, okay? But it is a, a linear equation is also, um, or this right here, uh, precisely, is a polynomial equation. Now, you would say, oh, that's just a linear equation. Yes, indeed, it's true. Let's take a look at another one. x squared is equal to 4. This is a quadratic equation, but it's also a polynomial equation because quadratic functions, okay, are a subset, you know, they are a second degree polynomial by definition. But something like this as well is a polynomial equation. So we can have higher order polynomial equations. But here is the main idea. The main idea is something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. The fundamental theorem of algebra. This is the main point of this video. And uh, that basically states the following. The degree or the power, the highest power of your polynomial equation. So this right here, 2x is equal to 10. What's the power or degree of this variable? It's 1, okay? Well, the fundamental theorem of algebra more, uh, states more or less that the highest power, okay, of, of that equation is how many solutions you're going to have, okay? So let me go ahead and write this right here real quick. So basically, the fundamental theorem of algebra states that the degree of the polynomial is how many solutions we will have. So 2x is equal to 1. This is 2 to the x to the, uh, to the first power. So there is only one solution here. So 2x is equal to 10. So to solve uh, this equation, x is equal to 5. That is the only solution. And of course, you know we know that because the highest power of x is 1. Now, how about x squared? is equal to four. Well, this is a quadratic equation, but there's going to be two solutions. Here, I could just take the square root of both sides. So x is gonna be equal to positive and negative two. Here is our uh, two solutions, okay? So again, once you recognize that you're dealing with a polynomial equation, you're like, all right, the fundamental theorem algebra, uh, I have to look for the degree, which is the highest power. Okay, that's gonna tell me how many solutions and what type of solutions. Well, it could be a combination 
Well, they could be, well, let me just say this. They could be all real or they could be uh, complex or imaginary or some combination of them. Now, there's all different sorts of types of uh uh, things that we can get into. There's different theorems we can, uh, you know, test for. You know, look at these powers, and you'll you'll learn all this stuff in higher uh, mathematics, you know, like pre-calculus. Matter of fact, if you are taking algebra two or pre-calculus, and you're like, yes, indeed, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I need help with this. Well, you'll find links to my full courses in the description below, so you get my full instruction on this. But I'm not going to get into this because, uh, or not into everything you need to know because it would just be too much in this video. I just want to kind of cover the big um, picture kind of ideas here. So again, we're like, all right, we have a polynomial equation because you can see here we have our variables. They have real number coefficients and the highest power uh, here is, um, or the degrees are positive integers. Now you might be saying, well, six is just a number. Well, six you can actually think of as six. Let me kind of erase this right here. Uh, and you might be like, well, six is just a number, but six you can think of as six to the eight to the zero. Okay, because anything to the zero power is one. So six times one, of course, would be six. But uh, anyways, so again, you're like a polynomial equation, and I'm looking here. I have a fourth degree polynomial equation. So fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, is going to tell me that I will have four answers. So that is the big, big picture um, concept that we have to first initially, you know, understand. I got a polynomial equation, and I must find four solutions. And I'm either looking for all four uh, solutions to be real numbers or complex numbers or some sort of combination of the two. Okay, so that is it. Now, in terms of the uh, methods and uh, strategies, well, there is a lot of stuff again, to know. But this particular problem, if you look at it, it might look kind of, kind of like a quadratic equation to some of you out there. It might look like, let me go ahead and just show you an example. You might be thinking, boy, this kind of looks like maybe something like this, right? Doesn't this look similar? Or maybe some of you might be thinking, it kind of looks like a quadratic trinomial. Well, if you're thinking that it does kind of look like, or they have similar patterns, because this is this power, okay, whatever it is, this is double this power, right? So if you kind of look, you're like, yeah, there is a kind of a pattern here going on. Well, you are thinking correctly uh, because what we can do here is use a concept called substitution and see if we can factor this, okay? Because factoring is always like the uh, probably number one best thing you want to try to do when you have a polynomial equation. You want to try to factor. Now, again, there are different uh, techniques that you uh, need to understand and use because if you can't factor then we're going to have to do a whole bunch of other stuff but we won't get into that in this particular video so let's go ahead and talk about how can we factor this uh, um, i almost said quadratic trinomial but it's a polynomial uh, equation how can we factor this well you want to use the concept of substitution Okay, so here I have a to the fourth plus a squared minus six. Boy, it would be nice if this was like a to the second plus a minus six is equal to zero because if this was this case, in other words, if this uh, equation was actually a squared plus a minus six and not a to the fourth plus a squared minus six, well, could we factor this? Yes, indeed, you could factor this. So we're going to use a little bit of a trick, and that's called substitution, right? Factoring by substitution, and you need to understand that. So here is what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to let uh, u, it could be any variable that you want, but I'm going to let u equal a squared, all right? u equal a squared. So it's going to equal this term right here. Now, why am I going to let u uh, equal to a squared. How is this going to help us out? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so here I'm going to let u equal to a squared. So I have a to the fourth plus a squared minus 6. Now, of course, here, because u is equal to a squared, this right here I can just put a u in for because I could substitute it. But a to the fourth, what can I do with that? Well, I could rewrite a to the fourth as a squared squared. Okay, a squared squared because a squared to the second power is a to the fourth. So this is a little bit of a trick because here I want an a squared as well. Here I have a squared, here I have an a squared, so I can substitute this a squared with u. So I have u squared plus a squared is u, 
minus 6. And now here we have a lovely quadratic trinomial. Okay, now I'm not um, solving this equation. The answer to this equation is not um, going to be the answer to the original equation, but this will um, allow us to actually solve the original equation. Okay, so this is, again is called factoring by substitution. And if you're looking at this, you're like, boy, I am totally lost. Well, listen, here's what you need to do. Uh, you just need to identify what skills you don't know. Now, if you're at this level of math, uh, in other words, second year algebra, college algebra, and you're struggling with this, well, you have to go back and strengthen, uh, you know, probably your factoring skills. Factoring uh, is a weak skill for a lot of students. So if you get really strong in factoring, it's going to make your life much, much easier. But even if you know factoring, if you can factor well, you still have to understand these concepts of, you know, these kind of, the, I don't want to say theoretical uh, concepts, but, you know, the theory is involved, right? We're talking about and higher order polynomial equation. You have to understand the fundamental theorem of algebra. There is a lot to know. So again, if you need help with this stuff, I'm gonna give you some specific suggestions here in a second, but let's move on now. And we um, have this quadratic uh, trinomial. Okay, this is nothing more than, for example, let's say x squared plus x minus six. Don't let this variable u scare you. It's just a variable like x. So my question to you is, can you factor this? x squared plus x minus 6. Well, hopefully you can because this is pretty easy. So here are the factors of uh, u squared plus u minus 6. So we can factor this into two binomials, u plus 3 times u minus 2. Okay, and you can check that, of course, if you wanted to just uh, multiply in using a FOIL technique. u times u is u squared, and u minus 2 is negative 2u. Uh, 3 times u is a positive 3u. Uh, we add these together, we'll get a positive 1u, and then 3 times this negative 2 is a negative 6. So this all works out. Now, when it comes to factoring, if you're not sure if you factor something correctly, you can always double check just by multiplying your factors back in and see, uh, seeing if, in fact, you get back to your original you know, um, uh, problem. Okay. All right, so here we uh, use factoring by substitution, and we have this uh, polynomial equation, quadratic equation. Now we have its factors. Now we can solve this pretty easily. We're going to solve this, and once we solve this solution, I'm sorry, once we get the solution to this equation, then we can find the solutions to the original equation. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. Uh, now, I need your support. Well, I would say personally, yes, of course. You know, I want to, you know, have, uh, you know, a big YouTube channel. I mean, that's fine and dandy. And, you know, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. And when I started this, I just, you know, it was a great venue to just put my math instruction on. Right now, I have over 2,000 plus uh, math videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So I've been teaching, you know, on YouTube for all these years. And I never really kind of uh, give it, you know, gave it a lot of thought in terms of asking uh, people to subscribe to my channel. But now, you know, my channel is like 500, at least the time of this video, like 514,000 subscribers. That's crazy, and I feel, you know, more responsibility, if you will, to reach as many people as I possibly can. So I have to ask for your support. It really is important for me. So. If you like, or if you're getting some sort of value from my content, by you subscribing, it's a simple thing that you can do to help me help others like you, okay? Now, if you're getting, um, you know, help from me, then well, that's the idea, okay? Then that's exactly what, you know, why I'm making this video, all right? So, but I like to help others as well. So by you subscribing, it does push out that YouTube algorithm, or what does that tell that YouTube algorithm to push my content to others uh, out there that are looking for help. But if you're going to do that, make sure to uh, hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos as well. Okay, so let's get back into this prom. So we saw that we were able to um, use substitution. And so instead of our a, a to the fourth plus a squared minus six, we let u okay, equal a squared. And we set up this quadratic trinomial. We were able to factor this. So this is where we're at. And of course, right here, we have um, these two factors, these uh, two binomials equal to zero. So we can use the, the zero product property to solve for you, right? This times this is equal to zero. 
Well, something times something else is equal to zero. That means that one or both of these things must be equal to zero. Again, this should be stuff that all of you out there at this level of mathematics should be like, yes, indeed, this is pretty easy. All right, so what we're going to do is set each factor equal to zero. So we have u plus 3 is equal to zero. u minus 2 is equal to zero. I'm going to solve for u. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So u is equal to negative 3 and u is equal to 2. Now, these two are the solutions to, these two solutions are the, uh, uh, the solutions to this equation. Okay, we're not done because this is not the original equation. So what do we do? Well, we're going to go ahead and substitute back out again. Okay, so instead of substituting in, we're going to use that uh, substitution to actually get the answers to the original question. So let me go to uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so remember, we let u equal to a squared, all right? And by doing that, we were able to solve for u. Okay, so u is equal to negative 3 and u is equal to 2. But the objective here is to solve for a. And remember, this polynomial equation has four solutions. One, two, three, four, because its degree is a fourth degree polynomial equation. So now, how do we solve for that? Well, what we're going to do is we have our u here. We're going to go back and resubstitute in a squared for u. Okay, so we're going to put in, we're going to take that u out. And because u is equal to a squared, now we're going to put in a squared for each of these um, basic equations. So a squared is equal to negative 3, and a squared is equal to 2. And what I have here is uh, two quadratic equations. And let's solve this one first. So a squared is equal to 2. How do I solve for a? Easy. Just take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you take a square root of a positive real number, you're going to have both positive and negative uh, roots. So a is going to be equal to positive and negative square root of 2. These are two solutions. In other words, we have positive square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. So here are two solutions. And here I have a squared is equal to negative 3. When I take the square root of both sides, I'm taking the square root of a negative uh, real number. Okay. Now here, right, this is a, a problem in terms of uh, the answer being a real number. This now is a complex or imaginary number. So we're going to have to know how to deal with that. But namely, uh, pretty uh, straightforward. This is just going to be a positive negative square root of 3i. Now, if you don't understand this, well, you need to understand complex numbers. So let me give you uh, some suggestions for those of you out there like, you know, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man. This was just too much. I don't like math because there's just too much stuff going on here. You know, I don't understand uh, the polynomials. I don't understand factoring. I don't understand complex numbers. Well, listen, I get it, okay? But here is the deal. Number one, at this level of math, there are no shortcuts. And you're going to have to kind of strengthen up your staircase to understand this material at this level, okay? So somewhere along the line, you started right here with basic, maybe like pre-algebra, and you just kept climbing, you kept learning more and more and more. But if you never really fully grasp some of these concepts along the way, then what's happening is that your, your staircase is getting shaky. And by the time you get way up here, you you just don't have enough support uh, to really be successful in math. But you can fix this, okay? The only way to fix this is you're going to, go, you're going to have to go back and strengthen the things you don't understand. Okay, there are no shortcuts. You can't be like, I'm going to close my eyes and, uh, you know, and hope that I never see these things again. Well, I can guarantee you will see them. But, you know, just make yourself like a little shopping list. All right, I need to pick up some math skills in factoring. I need to pick up some math skills and comp understanding complex imaginary numbers, da, 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 da. And just take it one skill at a time. Yeah, maybe it, you know, requires a little extra effort. But I can tell you, uh, you're going to have a lot of um, satisfaction by you know, learning things. You'll be like, okay, I learned it. Oh, I understand. So people who stay frustrated in math typically just don't want to put in the effort. That's number one reason. The number two reason, the, the effort to go back and correct things. They're just like hoping things will get better. Hope is not a strategy. But another huge reason people don't, you know, learn this stuff is the instruction. They're not understanding the instruction from the teacher. Okay, so that in that uh, regard, a lot of this isn't, you know, maybe you're the student's fault per se. But here I am um, telling you, I'm offering uh, my instruction. Okay, so if you don't have a teacher you like and understand, well, then I would like to be your teacher. So you can check out my courses. If you're at this level of math, I'd probably recommend 
uh, my pre-calculus course for most of you out there. Uh, my college algebra course or my algebra two course would suffice up to a level. But if you're at this level, you probably want to go in to, and learn, you know, um, even more advanced things about polynomial equations and the like. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.